What's going on guys, Phil here. I hope you're having an amazing day. Um, but today, I'm back with you with another video, and we're going to be going over the pros and cons of Battlefield 1 multiplayer. I've wanted to make this one for a while, but I wanted to make sure that I really, really played enough of the game. Um, had some more experiences, because when you play at launch, you get a different experience after some updates have come out and stuff. And you have a good feel for the classes after playing for a while. So now I think I've got it down pretty good. I'm about level 18. Um, I have my different classes ranked up a bit. I've played all the different maps, the vehicles. I've had a chance to really test them all out. So, we're going to start off with the pros, just like last time. But before I continue, please leave a like if you like the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and leave a comment at the end if you agree or disagree with my points of views. So, we'll start off with the pros, guys. Pro number one is the amazing graphics. And this one was, you know, usually a given with EA games. Whether the EA games are bad or good, you can always expect DICE and Frostbite to have amazing graphics. Whether you're playing on PS4, Xbox One, or PC, um, sure, the consoles might have a slow frame rate at times, but the graphics always look so sharp. Everything looks amazing. All the details, when you go prone in the mud, your gun gets mud when it's raining, the little raindrops, um, the explosions, the buildings... The gunfire, the sound, like, it, everything. It's just, the graphics are so good. Every map I play at, I'm sitting there like, wow, this is amazing. It's a cinematic experience every time. And it's a war game. And just like war, everything's unexpected. And the graphics are just always there to really immerse you, really make you feel like you're inside World War One. So that's the first pro. The second pro are the weapons classes. I think they did an amazing job this year balancing the weapons classes. Everything seems really balanced. You have a bunch of varieties. You need each class in your squad, basically. That's what I think is the most important. If you have an all assault class, everyone can take down tanks. That's fine and stuff, but when you're capturing flags, you won't be able to revive people. You won't be able to heal them. If you got a bunch of snipers, they might be really good snipers, but eventually you miss some bullets, you run out of ammo, you need the support class. Each class has its own advantages and disadvantages, and you need a really good balance to really be a good Battlefield player. And I think that the changes they made, like the support class getting the repair tool and the mortars, um, and then the engineer is, has now the assault class, is really good. And also, the vehicle classes. When you go into a vehicle, you become a pilot or an engineer, and you have the gear that a pilot has, or a driver has for a tank. It really makes people think twice about going into a tank and then completely just ditching it because now you have this class that's designed for the tank. They want you to stay with the tank, stay with the planes, it'll benefit the team and it really would just benefit you because you have the tools that you need to repair the vehicle, etc. So they did a really good job with that. Pro number three, the great vehicle selection. There. I thought for a second it's World War One. there's not going to be as many vehicles as maybe Battlefield 4, Battlefield 3, but I was wrong. They really have so many different things. They have the tanks, but the tanks are special because there's different types of tanks. You can have a land ship where the people on the side have the usual tank um, uh, rounds and then the driver themselves can have the little like LMG machine gun. Um, you have the lighter tanks which are faster, the artillery trucks. You have the motorcycles to get around places fast. You have horses, which give you, yet again, another class with the sword and the cavalry sniper. Um, galloping around, really close quarter stuff, fast travel. Um, the planes themselves, too, there are three classes. You have the dogfighter plane, the attack plane, and the bomber plane, which all add their own unique contribution to the battlefield and their own unique um, skill set and stuff. So I think that the vehicle selection was really, really good this year. And then the losing team gets the armor train or the blimp, depending on uh, what the score is, which can also help them like get back into the match and try to make a comeback. Those vehicles are very powerful, but they can be defeated, but they really do add and a very important dynamic to a battlefield game. A battlefield game is not a battlefield game without its variety of vehicles. Because in war, you will have vehicles, you will have equipment. They need that, and they nailed it this year. Pro number four, dynamic weather. The dynamic weather and the maps that support it are so great. It, the changes that are made are so drastic. And, you know, at first I was very surprised. Um, the map you're seeing right now, the way I spawned was in the desert. And, and there was a sandstorm in the middle of it. And you couldn't really see anything. I tried to fly a plane. I couldn't really see. Um, it really lowers the vehicle. So when the sandstorm kicks in, the tanks, the planes, they don't become as powerful because you can hide from them and they can't see. And that gives the infantry an advantage. Um, other weather things are like the rain that comes in. 
it might not be as drastic because it's just more of like a visual thing the rain coming in but again um it still adds a whole different feel to the map and i'm not sure of the name but the map that is italian that takes place in the mountains has a fog and once again like that sandstorm that fog obstructs visions for planes the amount of time i've flown a plane and a fog has come in and i've just crashed that thing to the side of a mountain it's not it's not been pretty sometimes but the dynamic weather changes really adds a lot to the game and i think they did a great job with what maps and what types of dynamic weather changes are added pro number five the epic soundtrack this game soundtrack is incredible even in the beta when you load up that screen and it's still black and you hear the chorus going up you hear the instruments playing and then battlefield one it says welcome and you're in the menu and it says happy friday or happy sunday happy monday whatever and the music is playing and you're choosing what to play or even when you join a game and the beat builds up as the game nears an end or an enemy has captured an important flag or the really sad music that plays when you have to respawn the mellow everything every single song is just so perfectly designed for each mood and moment in the battlefield in the battlefield one game that they really did an incredible job and it's one of the one of the best shooting soundtracks i've heard in a really really long time and the last pro is its World War I feel. This might seem like a dumb pro because, yes, it takes place in World War I. That's the point. We know it's World War I. But the way they got it done, the way that the, the players, you know, in, in previous games, they would yell or say, that's an enemy. Uh, look at that. We got a plane over there. This time they are yelling for their lives. Enemy tank. Enemy plane. I got one over here. Cover me. Bayonet. They're, 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 like, they're terrified. They're scared. Because that was World War One. World War One was, we go in there, it's the war to end all wars. We're heroes back at home, it's all great. And they get there, and yes, of course they were heroes because they were soldiers, but it was so violent, so terrifying. It was a war unlike any war before. And they really got that feel down. Um, even in things like the way they, they named the flags, Apples, Butter, Charlie, um... Uh, I'm blanking here on the other names. I'm not sure why, but the, the, the names, it's not just A, B, C, Alpha, Bravo. Um, they have the actual names, like apples and stuff. So, yeah, it's just a really World War One feel. You just, you really get the atmosphere. They nailed every single one of that. It does a really good job. The weapons, the sounds, the reloads, it all just seems so older, so World War One, so old school. The things that we have wanted. Now we're going to move on to the cons, guys. There aren't that many. But the first con is the lack of variety of game modes. Although I love Conquest and Rush can be fun sometimes, I found myself really only playing Conquest and the other game modes didn't really seem to do it for me. Team Deathmatch, just with all those vehicles and the bigger maps, I didn't really want to play Team Deathmatch. And Domination, again, it's like a shorter Conquest. You get A, B, and C. There's lacking a lot of vehicles. It's just... I don't want the the gun-on-gun the -gun combat. I really want the big scaled, large scaled maps. That's why I buy a Battlefield game. I buy a Battlefield game to get the big epic maps, the big epic game modes. That's why I buy it. I don't like the other game modes, and there aren't really any other game modes besides Conquest, Rush, War Pigeons, um, Team Deathmatch, Domination, and then the Operations mm -hmm. mode. So... That was kind of a letdown for me. And the second con are the sound glitches. Even today, I'm recording this. It is November 8th. It's the day to vote, guys. But anyways, um, there are still so many sound glitches when I join the game. I'll sprint or shoot a gun. It'll be quiet or delayed. Or it'll just be really quiet. Then suddenly I hear a tank starting up. And then suddenly I hear like the wind and then shooting. It's like, it's like the sound takes a long time to load. And it seems like a really odd thing to have this far in. The game came out early on the 18th launch day on the 21st in October, and we're still having these little sound glitches. It really ruins the experiences sometimes. And the third and final con are the servers. The servers are down a lot. I'll go in there and they'll say servers are down. I'll check Twitter. People are upset because they can't connect. And sometimes you'll connect to a game where the matchmaking will fail. There were many times during my live streams that um, we just lost connection or, or we would join a game and then everything would freeze. Um, so the servers are very, very weird. Now, I don't know if this is just Battlefield 1 or it's other games like FIFA and Titanfall, but it's still a problem that needs to be addressed. I think they really have to fix those servers um, because sometimes it can get annoying even when I'm trying to join a friend's game and they can't really join with me. It gets kind of frustrating and ruins from the experience and it just, it just doesn't make you want to play anymore if you're having a hard time joining. 
So, yeah, guys, those are my pros and cons. But honestly, Battle for the One is an incredible game. Even with those little cons, I'll still play it all the time. I think you guys should play it. If you haven't had a copy already, at least go rent it at Redbox or something because it's such a good game. I really think you won't be disappointed. But thank you so much for watching another pros and cons video. Leave a comment down below what game you'd like to see me do a pros and cons for. I already did Infinite Warfare's multiplayer beta, so you can check that out in the description down below as well. But guys, please leave a like and share this video if you can and subscribe if you haven't already i'd really appreciate it until the next video guys my name is phil and i cannot wait to see you then goodbye and the people who are getting shout outs you know um they might not get as much as that youtuber makes the video but after thinking about it for a while i started to really see the benefit of a good shout out sunday video a good shout out sunday video not video but series um adds benefit to to everyone and I'll explain to you how, how mine is going to work. Um, I'm not going to say it differently than others because I've never seen.